Hey everybody, it's Al again with Bobcat. So I wanted to pick up where I'd left off. We had uh, we had created this uh, this design here uh, in the last video, and what I wanted to talk about is uh, if you needed to make some changes to the design real quick. One of the things that I wanted to do was this radius here. I wanted to remove that radius. So in order to do that, I just go to selection mode, I select it, and then I delete it. So now there, now it's no longer there, so what I need to do is trim these two lines back up in order to um, close that chain. So I'll do trim two entities, click on those two, and, and now that's gone away. Uh, same thing, if I wanted to get rid of this chamfer here and put a fillet on there, I could select these, uh, the geometry I want to remove, select it, delete it, and then I could do arc fill it. I uh, put my value in there, and then at that point, uh, I've recreated that area. You know, if I wanted to, you know, add a, add a smaller hole, I could do line join, maybe from here to here, and then I could put a, you know, a hole uh, on the midpoint of that line, you know, or maybe I could do line parallel you know, set this a certain distance out, like that, and then I could do arc snap, um, you know, and throw a hole right on the center there. Okay, so you have uh, some different tools that you can use to edit or to add geometry to existing drawings. Uh, another example here is I'm going to do an offset on this, so I'm going to do other offset, um, So I'm going to offset this to the outside, just like that. Okay. Um, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two pieces. So we're going to say two. And you, and you got to be really careful here because now we have this double entity on the bottom. But I'm going to break it into two. So I have this piece here. And then from there, I'm going to do utilities break entity and this one's going to be uh, at 70 so I'm going to put 70 in um, 70 in here and then I'm going to do 110 okay and then now I'm going to snap you know my hole here and my hole here okay so you know, if you want to uh, edit your geometry and, and make changes, uh, you know, uh, you can definitely do that after you've created the design. And you can add features to it uh, and make adjustments. But really what I wanted to look at was, you know, the machining side of things. Now, we have our cam tree here and you can load up a new job and define this process. But one of the things that you can do as well is you can create a file that has already set up your stock and your your machining strategies. So in this case, uh, by creating this template file, you know I've gone through and I've really answered all the questions and set up all the features of how I want to cut, and uh, it just makes uh, working with your projects a lot easier and, and quicker. So I'm going to take this file here and I'm going to copy it. Okay, so now I have it copied, and then I'll cancel, and I'll go into my machining template, and then I'm going to paste it, and now you can see we have our part over here, all right? So, what we want to do is uh, we want to look at uh, machining our inside shape. So, we have a couple. We have some holes, and then we have these other cutouts. So, I have two features set up right now, one for inside shape, one for outside shape. I'm going to go with the inside shape first, and I'm going to right click reselect and then I'm gonna shift left click shift left click and then I'm gonna hit my spacebar and what that's done is selected those two profiles the next thing I want to look at is this default chain start point I can right click and modify and you'll see these arrows come up and those arrows indicate where the tool is gonna lead in from so I want the tool to lead in from here and to lead in from there and I want them cutting in counterclockwise for my inside shapes now that that's done, I can hit my space bar, and then I can uh, go to either the top menu, or I can go to this uh, uh, bottom menu here, and I can hit Compute Toolpath. And what that's going to do is generate the toolpath to come in here and profile this around. We have our uh, teardrop lead-in, 
the green geometry is the tool path and then it's gonna actually in this example it goes slightly past the start point uh, and comes back up all right now if we want to look at our settings we can come in here uh, to the main menu right click and choose edit and these are all the settings that we're gonna use now when we go to our plasma tool, we, ha we have a bunch of options here that actually don't apply to plasma. Uh, the Bobcat Express system works with oxyfuel, it works with lasers, it works with water jets, so uh, there's a bunch of different options, some of which apply, some don't. The areas that we really want to look at is our diameter of the uh, the tool that we're using or the nozzle like th 30 or 60 or 80 depending on whether it's fine cut or coarse cut or the thickness of the material that you're working with uh, we're gonna look at our feed rate here which is how fast we're gonna be cutting along we're gonna look at our pierce dwell which is after the plasma uh, is turned on uh, how long it stays in that position to establish a good arc uh, and that's a variable and usually there's a cut table that uh, comes with your plasma or from your plasma manufacturer that will provide that information pulse frequency and power setting has to do with laser so that's not going to apply torch height control or THC um, this can be handled a couple of different ways either it's handled at the control externally from the control uh, it could be programmed in your CAD CAM system it's really going to depend on the manufacturer you're working with on this example I'm setting this just as my pierce height you know how how far above the material before the plasma is turned on okay so in these all of these settings are already set up and you can adjust them and save them uh, for, for future jobs as well a couple of the other things that I want to look at here is the lead so I have my lead in amount I'm doing a blend I can adjust these values and I have my uh, overlap amount as well how far it goes past the cut so all of those are avail uh, available to be adjusted as needed all right so we have our inside shape and we have both of those cut the next thing that you want to look at here is our outside shape so what I'm going to do is same thing right click on geometry left click on reselect I'm gonna shift click on the profile spacebar Okay, and that and that will select the shape. I'm gonna uh, go to my start uh, default chain start point. Right, right click and modify. And uh, for the inside shapes, I'm doing counterclockwise. The outside shapes, I'm gonna do clockwise. So I'm just gonna click on that arrow, and it will change the direction. And then I'm gonna hit spacebar. Now from here, I can go to my outside shapes. Right click, compute all tool path. And what you're going to see is in this example, I use the same teardrop lead in. And because it's a sharp corner, it really makes sense to do a parallel lead in. So let's go ahead and change that. We're going to go to our outside shape, edit. We're going to click on our leads and we're going to go to parallel. And we're going to use a parallel lead in and a parallel lead out. I'm going to set that to 100 thou and then we'll go ahead and compute and now you can see it starts off the part runs around and then cuts past it okay very easy to make that adjustment now when we're looking at our holes here you know I want to machine these holes with the same settings that I've used for the inside and outside shape but I want to uh, change my lead in type so I'm gonna to go to my inside shape uh, feature I'm gonna right click and choose copy and then I'm going to right click on that feature again and choose paste. Now I've created another feature. I'm going to right click on this and choose rename. And I'm going to call this holes. I'm going to go ahead and select the holes that I want to work with, which is going to be this one, this one, and this one. Once I, ha once I have them selected, I'm going to hit my space bar. So that's done. Then I'm going to uh, go to holes, right click and edit. And I'm going to change my lead to a right angle lead and then I'm going to set the value that I'm going to lead in on. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do a lead out and I do want an overlap and then I'll go ahead and compute. And here you can see we have a, a right angle lead in, it goes around and we have an overlap. If we needed to change our start position, we could change it just like we did for our inside and outside shapes. Okay. So now we have this part programmed. Uh, the next thing that we want to look at is, um, how to make copies of this, how to make multiples of these parts on the same sheet, because we have a 24 by 24 sheet that we're working with, so we want to make copies for this, and, and we'll pick that up in the next video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, reply back to the thread or the Facebook page, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do that now. Thank you so much.